وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد وإن مظاهر الدنو الهمة ways and forms in which low aspiration is found we spoke about 20 types or 20 forms and inshallah ta'ala today we're going to take the 21st type or form in which low aspiration manifests and that is istijda'un nasi wa mas'alatuhum sitting back from working and exerting hard work you don't do that you don't work and what you do is you ask and you beg the people one of the ways in which low aspiration manifests is insani The person sits back. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't work. He doesn't exert any effort. And the person leaves off striving on this earth. And walking on the face of this earth. In order to stay away from asking the people. He doesn't do any of that. He doesn't exert any effort. He doesn't get a job. What he does is he just asks the people. He begs. He says, please give me this. Please give me this. Which really brings him to humiliation and puts him down. Asking the people. And begging the people is uh, low aspiration. And it is also It is also low dignity. Especially if the person who's asking is qadiran ala al amal. The person is able to work. Well kasp and is able to attain income or he is كان يسأل الناس or he's asking the people just to get more or من غير or he asks the people when there's actually no need for it Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymi rahimahullah he said فالعبد لا بد له من رزق the person has to have رزق the person has to have income. I mean, the human needs that. It's a necessary part of the human. We all need risk. If the person begs Allah, he asks Allah for it. He becomes a slave to Allah. فَقِيرًا إِلَيْهِ In need of Allah. وَإِذَا طَلَبَهُ مِنْ مَخْلُوقٍ but if the person asks the creation, you become a slave to that person in need of that person. The person has authority over you. They have power over you. And because of that, asking the creation became muharramatan. It became something which is haram. Fil asli. The default position is that you're not allowed to ask anyone for anything. But it was allowed when there is a necessity. When it's a very serious situation, you can go and ask. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he says, there are many ahadiths that prohibit asking the people. And they can be found in in books of hadith which are sahih. والسنن والمسانيد and you can find it in the sunan and you can also find it in the masanid the musnads of Ahmed you can find it in the sunan Abi Dawood and Tirmid Ibn Ubaja you can find it in the sihah Bukhari and Muslim 
one hadith, for example, and this is after the statement of Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah finished, I'll give you one hadith that speaks about asking the people, Mas'alatul Makhluq. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا تزال المسألة بأحدكم حتى يلقى الله تعالى وليس في وجهه مزعة لحم The person, if he carries on and is consistent and is continuous in asking and begging the people, he will meet Allah the day of judgment. He will come the day of judgment and there is not a shred of flesh on his face that day. He does not have a shred of flesh on his face that day. He humiliated himself. Bukhari and Muslim both narrated that. Mas'alatul nas, begging the people and asking the people, is a characteristic or a trait that shows low aspiration. And this mas'ala, inshaAllah ta'ala, if Allah wa ta'ala gives us the strength and the ability, we might bring it up. Uh, in uh, another part of our series, inshallah ta'ala, of Al-Himmatul Aliyah, Ama'ulul Himma. The 22nd quality, inshallah ta'ala, the 22nd quality, or the second, uh, the 22nd trait and form in which man, uh, in which low aspiration manifests is Al-Kibru wa Ta'ali. Al-Kibru wa Ta'ali means what? arrogance and feeling that you are superior to everybody else and this characteristics and this attribute of arrogance and thinking you're superior to everybody else is madhmumatun fi shar'i it is something that the sharia belittles wal aqli logically it's something low wal fitrah and in the human's natural disposition it is something blameworthy this characteristics of al kibru wa ta'ali arrogance and being full of yourself the arrogant person is mamqutun 'inda allah wa 'inda khalqi he is someone who is hated and despised by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the creation he is looked down at and hated and not appreciated in no way whatsoever by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the creation the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a hadith and Imam Muslim narrated in his sahih, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر He will not enter Jannah or she will not enter Jannah. The person who has in their heart a mustard seed of arrogance. قال رجل a man said, a man said to the Prophet, he said, إن الرجل يحب أن يكون ثوبه حسنا ونعله حسنا what about a person who loves to wear good clothing? He loves to wear good trainers or good sneakers, or he wants to he loves wearing good set of shoes. What about that person who loves to look good and tidy and clean? The messenger then defined the reality of arrogance. The Prophet said to the companion, Inna Allah Jamilun, Allah is beautiful. Yuhibbul Jamala, Allah loves beauty. Al Kibra Al Kibru. Al-kibru, arrogance, is batarul haqqi wa ghamtul nas. The messenger now defined haqiqatul kibri, the reality of arrogance. And it's what? Two things. Batarul haqq. And batarul haqq means what? Ya'ni daf'uhu wa radduh. Rejecting the truth. Repelling the truth. Once the truth comes to you, you reject it. You push it away. That's what the word uh, batar means. وَغَمْطُ nas means what? اِحْتِقَارُهُمْ Belittling the people, saying, what are they? Those people? What are they? You belittle the people. This is what? فَمِنْ مَظَاهِرِ الْكِبْرِ One of the ways you can identify someone is arrogant. And there's arrogance in them. الْإِعْجَابُ بِالنَّفْسِ The person who is full of themselves is عَدَمُ قَبُولِ النَّقْدِ الْبَنَّةِ When a constructed criticism is put to them, a constructive criticism, a well-presented criticism, a criticism 
or an advice which is al-hadifa and naqd al banna the criticism is well structured the advice is done in the world in the yani done in a well mannered way you see that person he doesn't want to accept it wa minha an yara al insan li nafsihi haqqan ala allah and one of the ways that you can identify someone has arrogance or is full of themselves they are conceit how do you know that individual he sees that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has rights on him. He believes Allah tabarak wa ta'ala should give me this. Why not? Or what he sees is wa fadlan ala nas. He believes that the people should treat me in a certain way. He gets angry when the people don't treat him in a certain way. He says, you know who I am? Why are you not treating me like this? The one who has al-kibr and the ijab bin nafs he is what he really wants to be treated in a certain way. He doesn't get it. He starts to say remarks like, Do you guys know who you're dealing with? This, all of it, is a real indication, a sign of low aspiration. So, this person has no high aspiration. Because remember, brothers and sisters, all through this, we've been mentioning traits and ways to see that a person has low aspiration these people their whole entire uh, goal is worldly issues so they're looking for low matters when you want people to appreciate you who are you dismissing you're mis dismissing allah what i want for my action is allah recognizing it allah rewarding me for it it's allah i went right so the human beings is not what my focus should be. If they appreciate it, فَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدُ وَالْمِنَّةِ If they don't appreciate it, فَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدُ وَالْمِنَّةِ Praises to Allah. It doesn't change the way I, inshallah ta'ala, be. When, I, when you have that high aspiration, you've chosen the creator over the creation. The arrogant person, on the other hand, like he know, or the person who's conceit, no. He wants to get the effort and the hard work he or she has exerted they want to find the reward for it in this world. They have low aspiration. They're stuck to the earth whilst the rest of the world, or the whilst the rest of the people, the people who have high aspiration, are up there in the sky thinking about what does Allah think about what I did? Is Allah happy with me? Is Allah pleased with me? Have I made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy with me? Have I earned a place in Jannah through the speech and action of mine? That is how you realize it. When the criticism comes to them, even if the criticism is done in a way that is despicable and it's done in a way that they feel like they've been offended, they stay within that they find it in themselves to dismiss the way that they were spoken to and the way that they were disrespected and they look beyond and above that and they take the truth in that person's statement. Even if they feel hurt by what the person is, the way they said it and the way that they spoke to them, through all of that, through all of all of that, they know how to uh, take out the good that the person mentioned. So someone comes up to you and insults you and says, who do you think you are? You are nothing. You are this. And then after that, he tells you something about you. Ignore all of that critic insult that he threw at you and all of that which he held at you. Ignore it all and do what? Take that, 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 that which they told you and try to work on yourself. Because at the end of the day, what they've said to you is just going to go over time. It's going to fade out, inshallah. But you can take something from this, which is you knew, remember, that you're not perfect. You knew that, right? We all know that we're not perfect. So when someone criticizes me, I know I'm deficient. And I know that they're most likely going to mention something I am. And so I want to work on myself. Isn't that not what I want? So I will use it. Imagine you want to cook good food. Very, you want to cook a good dish. Okay, someone comes up to you and says to you, you know what? Um, and this person is saying it to you in maybe a way that you don't like. But you know they know what they're talking about. You know that this person, generally speaking, is a person who knows how to cook. But they're not telling you in a nice way. But you want to cook a good dish. Maybe you're going to get a prize for it or 
You're going to get rewarded for it. Are you going to take on board what they say? Even if they don't say it in a nice way? Yeah, you would. You would take it. Look at how many people humiliate themselves for their jobs. Because they know they need the money at the end of the month. Humiliate themselves from it. That If you can do that for dinar and dirham, or a little dish that you want to make, what about your akhirah? What about your akhirah? Not everybody who tells you things in a nice way is actually telling you the truth. And if someone might come and insult you and belittle you and put you down, but tell you the truth. And another person may come and say in a nice way something that's not true. And a lot of people get fooled by this. Iblis, alayhi la'aimullah. Iblis, what did he do? He came to Adam, alayhi salam. He came to who? Adam, alayhi salam. And he did, did he speak in a good night in way? Did he speak in a good way to Adam alayhi salam? Of course he did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, that Iblis said, وَقَاسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ He swore by Allah. أَيْ أَقْسَمَ بِاللَّهِ لَهُمَا He swore by Allah. As Tafsir al-Jalalain says. He swore by Allah and he said, I swear by Allah for you both. إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ That I am a sincere advisor for you. And then what did he say? Eat from this tree. And then he told them the benefits of them eating. So he swore by Allah first. The second thing he did was he told them his intention and why he's doing this, why he's telling them this. I am a sincere advisor to you. And the third thing that he did was what? He said to them both, I want for you guys a kingdom that's forever going to remain. You see, and I want you guys to live forever. Eternal life, ultimate strength, which is kingdom. He, he swore by Allah to them. He told them that he's a sincere advisor for them. And then he told them what he wants them to do in a way that is well presented. But was he good for them? Was he a sincere advisor for them? Did he want good for Adam and Hawa? No. He spoke in a way that was pleasing to them. He spoke in a way that was convincing. But it didn't mean that what he said was right. The same way that the person who criticizes, he slanders you, he belittles you, he puts you down, doesn't mean that what he's saying is always wrong. It could be possible that what that person told you is exactly the truth and the reality of what you are. Take it and forgive them, inshallah ta'ala, so Allah can forgive you the day of judgment. Forgive them for how they spoke to you and what they said to you. But take the good that they've told you about yourself and the mistakes that are present in you. And the, take it. That's your, pro, your that's the lost property of the believer. If you lost, if you found, you lost a million pounds uh, uh, and you found your million pound in a garbage, someone threw it inside there or it fell inside there. You found your million pounds or million dinar or dirhams. You found it there. Would you take it? I would say, it's inside a garbage. I'm not going to take it. No. You collect it and clean off the dirt and put it in your bag. Because it's your property. You'll take it wherever you find it. The truth is like that to the believer. They will take it wherever they find it. So what I mean by this is that don't be a person who's got arrogance. and Don't be full of yourself at all. Know your reality. How many of us today have been guided for a very short period of time? Allah guided us yesterday. Yesterday we, start, we started practicing. Allah said in the Quran, It was yesterday that we didn't know much. It was yesterday that we started to practice our religion. Yesterday, yesterday. And when I may say yesterday is a figurative speech. I mean recently we started practicing. I myself included. And now that we've understood a bit of issues here or there, we shouldn't be full of ourselves. Wallahi, what we don't know is far greater and more. Every day you study and you learn and you read and you read, you learn. You don't have uh, even one-tenth of knowledge, let alone one, one-hundredth of knowledge, you don't have it. Knowledge is an ocean that has no shore. Righteous actions, you haven't done it all. There's many more things. Faults and mistakes are filled up 
improve by us, the, the things that we do wrong, and the mistakes that we fall into, and how we treat others. Every day is full of mistakes. With that being said though, inshallah we work to progression every day. We're progressing in life. Every morning we wake up, we're trying to work on ourselves, nurture ourselves, and be even in over time. We will get there, inshallah ta'ala, where we will change a lot, of our, a lot about ourselves. May Allah give us the strength and the ability and the conviction and the high determination, high aspiration, lofty aspiration to rectify our situation and work on ourselves in order to get our place in Jannah. I'm going to stop there, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan. And Allah and His Messenger are both free from it. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.